Hi, Terry Van Noy. Welcome to Math Class with Terry V. Hope this video helps you out, and if you enjoy it, please share it, comment, or like it. And you can also go to my website, mathpowerline.com. It's a math resource blog, uh, lesson videos for students, and other resources for parents and teachers. Give me a call, or go to my website or email. All right, let's go to today's lesson. What I've got here is a self quiz. This is the last in the series of videos that is about graphing linear inequalities. So when people watch these videos, I have to assume they've already seen the videos leading up to it. I had some of the basics about how to graph an inequality line and how to figure out what side of that straight line graph to shade and whether the line is solid or dashed. Okay. Now, if this doesn't make at all any sense to you, then you do need to go back, search on my channel for graphing linear inequalities, and you'll see the other videos there. This video right here is for you to grab a piece of paper, give it a try, hit pause, and then I'll go over each answer. All right, give these first four problems a try. Now, notice that they are in slope-intercept form. So by looking at each of these inequalities, you will be able to determine the slope of the line and the y-intercept. And then there's other clues there, as I mentioned in previous videos, what type of line it is and how you shade it. All right, go ahead. All right, here are the answers. Uh, let's look at number one. Remember that the key here is to think of this as an equation. So ignore the less than or equal to symbol for now and think of it as equals and then we think of it as a linear graph which it is so here's your slope seven thirds but the very first thing is to find the y-intercept so the y-intercept is negative five you put a dot there and from that dot not from the origin but from the y-intercept you're gonna go up seven and over three so you go up seven and over three and then you can put a little mark there all right, now you can continue to do that again if you want, but you're going to run out of space. Basically, now you can connect the lines, but since it's an equal bar down there, less than or equal to solid line. All right, now remember that you're going to test a point on one side of the line, and the easiest point most of the time is the origin. Okay, that's 0, 0. So now if you put it in there, you substitute, is 0 less than or equal to... 7 thirds times x is 0, take away 5. Alright, is 0 less than or equal to negative 5? Since that's no, that's false, shade on the other side. So there you go. Number 2, the slope is negative 5 halves, the intercept is negative 2, so you locate that first. And from that point, we want a negatively sloped line, so it's up 5 over 2, up 5, over 2 or you can go over to the left 2 and then up which puts a marker point right there and notice that it again has an equal bar there it's less than or equal to solid line okay so it includes points on that line then you're gonna go ahead and test the origin or any other point but the origin is the easiest does 0 or is 0 less than or equal to and when you put 0 in for x that cancels that whole term out and you get minus 2 so is 0 less than or equal to negative 2 and the answer is no so again shaded on the other side of the line alright number 3 slope is negative 4 fifths y-intercept is negative 1 so your line is going to be sloped at that angle there and again notice it's a negative slope it's got to go that way you're going to test the zero zero point it's false so you're going to shade below that line number four y is less than or equal to 2x ah very interesting what you're going to do is you have a slope of 2 which is 2 over 1 and you have a y-intercept of 0 because there isn't a constant number there right so go ahead and place a point there at the zero the origin point and go up from there um, one and two one and two one and two you have a slope of positive two right there solid line because of the equal bar again 
and now you can't test the origin because it's on the line. So test something else. All right, let's test if x is 1 and y is 1. Okay, notice that that would be that point right there. So when I test it, if it's true, I shade on that side of the line. So if y is 1, I put it in there, y is less than or equal to 2x, which is 2 times 1, is 1 less than or equal to positive 2. Since that's true, we shade on that side of the line. All right, here's four more to try. All right, I hope that you hit pause there and gave these a shot. Okay, so let's take a brief look here. Number five is um, we have a y-intercept of three, so obviously you're gonna make a point right there, and your slope is gonna be negative one-half, so you're gonna go up one every time you go across two and so you will end up with that angle of a line. It is including the equal bar there, so you have a solid line, and the origin does work, and any points below this line, you're gonna to have to shade that in. Uh, number six, now we're gonna get into six, seven, and eight, and we are looking at standard form, okay? So remember, that is the cover-up method. All right, so if I cover up the two x here, that means that x is 0 and I'm looking for the y-intercept. So negative y and we're going to just assume it's an equals sign. Okay, Again, the first way we place a line for an inequality graph is make an equation out of it and then we figure out the shading. So negative y equals 5. Okay, That means of course that y would be a negative 5. That's my y-intercept. So I'm going to put a point right there. All right. Now, that's if x was 0. We cover up that x term. Now, if y is 0, that whole y term gets covered up. That's why it's called the cover-up method. And so I would end up with 2x equal 5. Divide each side by 2. And, of course, 5 divided by 2 is 2 and a half. All right. So it's going to be kind of approximate, but we'll put a dot right there. So again, the cover-up method is you find the y-intercept, you find the x-intercept, and all you need is those two points connect your line. Okay. Notice it's less than or equal to, so solid line there. Now when I substitute in a test point, for example the origin, that's going to be 0, 0. So 2 times 0 minus 0, that whole thing is 0, right? Is 0 less than or equal to 5? Yes, that is true. So shade that point and everything on that side of the line. All right, number 7. Again, cover-up method because this is standard form. Let's go ahead and find the y-intercept. That means that x is 0. So I'd cover that up or ignore it. And that gives me negative 3y equals 9. Okay, cover up the x term because x is 0. That gives me this little equation to solve. I'm going to divide each side by negative 3. And so that is going to give me negative 3. All right, so that is my y-intercept. Put a dot right there. x-intercept, that means that y is 0. So now I have x equals 9. That y term simply just drops out. Now obviously I've run out of space here but it would be right about there out at positive 9 on the x-axis. I would connect my dots. Notice it's less than or equal to solid line. The origin does work when I substitute it in there. 0 is less than or equal to 9. That's true. And finally number 8 cover up method find the y-intercept that means x is 0 so negative 5y equals negative 20 again we're just pretending it's equals for now I'm going to divide each side by negative 5 and so that would give me a positive 4 so y-intercept at positive 4 
Now for the um, x-intercept, the y term drops out. We cover that up. So x is equal to negative 20. Okay, x equal to negative 20. Okay, that's my x-intercept. Well, obviously, that's going to be clear over here. I would connect that line, and it's going to be at that slope right here. Okay, the origin 0, 0 does not work because 0 minus 0 is not less than negative 20. All right, thanks so much for taking this self quiz. I hope you did okay. And if you have any questions, you can email me or give me a message on my YouTube channel, Math Class with Terry V. Thanks for watching. All right, there you have it. I invite you to go to my website now, mathpowerline.com, or email me or give me a call. The way I work best with students is live online in my classroom. So if I can help you in any way, answer some specific questions, the first lesson with me is free as I show you how everything works. All right, study hard and take care.